you just hear that car go by? Nope. Good. Can you hear me chewing french fries? Nope. Awesome. Perfect. <laughs>
Mm-hmm. So like, there's just a bunch of redundant spells. If we go to the Archmage, the CR 12. Jesus. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five cantrips. Uh, four first level slots, three second, three third, three fourth, three fifth, six, uh, one sixth, one seventh, one eighth, and one ninth. Uh, and there are just an obscene amount of spells. You can't memorize all of them as a game master. You just can't. No. I'm sorry. So you're probably going to go through that spell list and pick out, okay, first his strategy is going to be to, I don't know, cast invisibility on himself then he's going to move around to here using his misty step and then he's going to drop a fireball on the party that's his first couple plans so you're going to memorize those spells and one or two others that you think he's going to use and then you're not going to bother with a bunch of spells that you're not using anyways that seems reasonable I honestly recommend that you just figure out what spells he's going to use and then figure out how many times he's going to cast that spell and don't worry so much about slots and don't be afraid to move things around as well you know what maybe he's got a few extra third level spell slots because not everybody has to play by the pc's rules that is true player's handbook was designed to balance uh the player <laughs> characters and I use the term balance very loosely because they released the ranger. <laughs> that is Nobody not the ranger's the ranger. fault. <laughs> the ranger should be awesome. It should be the martial version of the bard. Mm -hmm. Because this is a side tangent, but the ranger and the bard should be the two classes that you go to when you have no idea what you want to do. Followed by the cleric, but I do not recommend the cleric to new players purely because you got to know a lot of shit. But yeah. if you want a, if you want a character that's kind of sneaky, but also can be up in combat, but also can be casting spells, the bard and the ranger are usually the two that come to mind. Yeah, especially the bard. It's such a versatile class. Like you can play just about anything, any style with it. Oh yeah, I love bards. Bards are wonderful. Davy Chappie is right. Bard is the best. I love bards. The ranger just feels like an underpowered fighter. Just play a fight. I don't know. They, the old Unearthed Arcana for the ranger was pretty good. I think in some ways it was a little too powerful. But I digress. <laughs> That's okay. We do that a lot. We'll do a whole other episode on why the ranger should suck. Okay. Aragorn, damn it. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so what I'd recommend for people to try doing is figure out the four or five spells that they're going to use and then just say they're going to cast seven spells throughout this combat. Don't worry so much about their levels. I mean, obviously don't hit them with all the high level stuff. Um, another system that I've actually implemented is instead of counting their spell slots, I add up however many slots they have and I give them that many points. They cast a third level spell, I subtract three from it. Keeps it easy to keep track of over a long combat. That does sound a lot easier. And sure, you could drop some big spells with them, but then say there was 15 points in there and I drop two level six or six level spells well now i've got three spell points left mm -hmm. for the rest of combat so that npc had better have done something pretty spectacular to burn all of that in all at once yeah there was one article that i read that got into could you counter spell these these new actions that they're using because they're an action and counter spell specifically says uh, counters a spell. Right. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts, Megan? I would say yes, that you can still counter spell because it's still a spell, even though it's being cast as an action. 
Yep. But that's coming from like I, a uh, simplified word to word looking at it. I mean, I actually agree with you, but for a slightly different reason. Okay. I think that they should be able to counter it. Absolutely. Let him burn a third level spell slot on something that he can do again next turn. Yeah. Your party has to burn resources to stop these effects. Sure, let them do it. But now they're burning resources to do it. Where the bad guy will just do it again next turn. And the turn after that. But maybe that counterspell is what you need to buy enough time to finally end this fight. And you're hoping he doesn't get another turn. Yeah. That's always that way a we're not... good hope. <laughs> well, that way we're not negating counterspell as a useful tool. Right. So there's quite a few different options and avenues to play with. And I really recommend that people do try different things and find what works for you and your group. Just be upfront with your players when you're trying some wonky homebrew shenanigans. Oh, definitely. I am really lucky in that I have two groups that are very, very open to my shenanigans. Yeah, pretty much. I... You bring it to us and tell us why you want to try it, and we're like, okay, let's try it. And we've tried a couple different things, and some of them stick, some of them don't. I've tried to get rid of initiative like three or four times, um, and I think it's possible. It's just really, really hard. Uh, if you want to learn how to do that, Professor Dungeon Master explains it better than I could ever do it. So go check out his YouTube channel. <laughs> well, thank you guys for listening in again, and we look forward to seeing you in the or hearing or you hearing us in the near future.